Hey, Coach. How are you? Right in the middle. Good. How are you? Good. So, obviously, coming into this season, coming off a national championship, you have quite the freshman class and transfer class coming in. So what have you kind of seen from them since they've been on campus here for a little while now? I've only had them twice a week since school started. So I don't know that it would be fair to evaluate them until I've had them every day for at least a couple of weeks. But talent is there. We can score the ball at a lot of positions, really at all positions, um, and lots of depth. I can tell you that. So I can't hide that. When you come and you watch us, it's, it's a very uh, talented team offensively and um, got a good mixture of returning players and newcomers. Uh, you know, last year the phrase big personalities was used a lot. Uh, now you have big big personalities and, uh, and big exposure. How are you managing the beast that is LSU women's basketball right now? I don't know that I'm going to have a problem managing it. You want those personalities to shine, make sure they shine in a positive light. Um, and you want that spotlight. Uh, you want the spotlight, and uh, I think everybody that's – going to have that uniform on is going to welcome that spotlight and uh, with it will come a lot of criticism but also a lot of rewards um, but I don't I don't anticipate them not being able to to handle what comes with what people expect of them hey coach um is there an update on uh, POA and then also just uh, yes. overall, is everybody else available? Yeah, thank you for reminding me of that so that when you come today, Flage sprained her ankle the day before yesterday, so she won't be in all the drills. She'll help with drills, but she's got a very mild sprained ankle. POA has been rehabbing and cleared to do some drills. She had the surgery on the metacarpal on the top of her hand where that bone, one of them was... Uh, broken and she's I don't know if you call it a plate I don't know what you call it that's in there but she's she's doing good so those two kind of won't be full speed today Kim you can't talk names but the last few football weekends you've hosted the who's who of basketball recruits for the next class um, is it getting easier and um, and also with that uh, do the arrows from your competitors for these recruits get a little bit stiffer I don't think recruiting is ever easy. It's work. I think there are two areas in our sport that are just draining, and they're areas that um, are the hardest. One is scheduling, and the se well, one is recruiting, and two is scheduling. Uh, and we're going to continue to recruit. Uh, is it easier? I don't think it ever is easy. Uh, but um, we're going to work hard and keep working hard and keep trying to bring the best in here to, to show than what we're about at LSU. Yeah, Kim, right here in the front. Uh, what have you learned over the years about, I guess, I know each year's a different one, but defending a title, coming off a, a championship here, I know twice you went to the Sweet 16 the following year, third time was COVID, you couldn't finish. But what have you, what, what have you applied to, you can apply to that situation? <clears throat> well, if you're referring to winning it back to back, I don't know that many do that in any sport. It's hard. It's hard to win it, period. Uh, but I've never been, well, I shouldn't say that. As a player, I want it back to back. But as a coach, it's hard. I don't think I ever have, even when we were favored to do so. Why is it harder? I think that <clears throat> if you're the underdog and you win a national championship, you didn't probably get everybody's best shot. And I think if you're the favorite, you're going to get everybody's best shot. And um, when you get beat, and we will get beat, you know that you're going to get beat by a team that was dang good that night because we'll be prepared and we'll play hard, but sometimes they just play better. Sometimes they're just better than you are. Um, but we understand. They're, I can't hide any of that from these kids. They know the expectations. Uh, but it's not going to devastate us or destroy us if we don't win another national championship. It's not going to devastate us or destroy us if we lose games. Um, you just want to get better and be playing your best basketball like we did last year at the right time. Hey, Kim, uh, how different has this been from 
the last three times that, that you were coming back from a national championship with with the the NIL and the social media and the and the, the appearances and the cover of Sports Illustrated with Angel and Olivia Dunn and that sort of thing. And, and, and how do you get them to focus now? You know, what, what's the message now that you're back, you know, practicing? Well, the attention is obviously different, but our world is obviously different with NIL, with brand, with social media. Um, LSU being as big a brand as it is is different for me. I've been at Louisiana Tech. I've been at Baylor. I haven't been at a huge institution, you know, with this many kids, what, almost 40,000, and then you add the brand and our social media department and, and how they compete with other um, women's basketball social media departments. Uh, it's just all bigger. And uh, my approach coaching is not going to be any different. Um, I can put them in their place and remind them, you know, that was yesterday. You know my old saying, if what you did yesterday still looks big to you today, then you haven't done much today. I can look in that locker room and only half of them have a championship ring. The other half came here to get a championship ring. So we have a good mixture of being able to um, humble each other and remind each other that we're not entitled to anything. We have to be hungry, we have to work hard, and um, the work hard part, Scott, I don't think is going to be a problem. When you watch us today, we get after it, and that's internal. That's competitors fighting for playing time. Hey, Kim, if we could just talk about some of the girls. Um, on a lot of those videos that you referenced, they talked about coming here, you know, to be pushed, to, to be the, their best. Uh, when I think of Haley and when I think of Anissa, just could you talk about how you're seeing them, you know, fold into the group? And then um, what, what can Aaliyah do to help Angel this year? Morrow and Van Lith bring experience and it matters. It's very obvious when um, you take a freshman and then you take a transfer that's got three years of college experience and you just put them out there, you, you just obviously can see the difference. Um, and it has nothing to do with talent. Um, Aaliyah will be the biggest one you see on the floor. I think Aaliyah and Samaya Smith um, they have to really, really understand their value to our team. We lost LaDasia. LaDasia was so good with Angel Reese. And I think they must understand you don't have to be LaDasia. LaDasia was a fifth-year senior. They're a freshman and sophomore. I will be fair with them and judge them based upon their progression, not on how do you compare to LaDasia, but they do understand what LaDasia's value was particularly throughout the playoffs. And um, Samaya stayed here all summer. She got in the weight room. She understands, I want that position. Aaliyah came here in the summer, had her ankle cleaned up, uh, was on a USA basketball team, made one of the teams, and chose to come here and work this summer. So um, those two kids have different personalities than LaDasia, but um, – I'm going to make sure they understand, I know you're just babies, but we still have to get production out of you. Coach, do you like the way your schedule came together, and would you have preferred to have that South Carolina game on a Sunday versus a Thursday night? Um, I don't really put – I just don't study schedules like I used to. It used to just make you mad. But I did kind of – and I, I don't know if this is true, but I did kind of ask – why that would be on a Thursday. And the response was, well, maybe they're doing some kind of package for Thursdays that we don't know about. Does that mean you're getting PM? I don't know. I don't know. But I just thought, yeah, um, it would have been that – w that jumped out, why a Thursday? Uh, but they'll, they'll explain all that, I guess, when they start asking you to move your games to certain days and times when, um, you know, television takes over. But Coach, right down here, I know you're experienced. You've obviously had a lot of young players contribute early on in their career. But coming off this championship, is there something, uh, maybe a timeline or expectation of, you know, when they really understand what it takes for the young players and the transfers like that you have for them? 
I don't think I can put a timeline on it until I have them every day just to see how much they comprehend and understand. What you hope happens is that um, Angel Reese and those returning players can push them on the floor to make them understand. We, we, we have to be understanding and patient with you, but we've we got to be really impatient. We've got to get you good fast. Um, and that, that comes every day. I don't know who's going to have a hard time remembering plays. That's always an issue. I don't know who's going to be the best five to put on the floor at the same time. Who are my defensive stoppers? I do think this. I do have more than one defensive stopper in this group. But what they don't have, some of them, are experience here on what we do defensively. Um, I, I wish I could rush time, uh, but they are talented. I will tell you that we have a very talented group. Hey, Coach, does uh, team chemistry build as the year goes? Uh, wh what is your thought and what's your experience on team chemistry, taking a lot of new talented players on paper and then turning them into a cohesive unit? Well, it doesn't develop in a locker room. It doesn't develop on paper. It develops on that court in practice every day. And it develops through the hard times. It develops when two of them are battling each other every day to try to make each other better and they're mad at each other. But the next day they come back and they go right at each other again. Because when they get to that game, they're not battling each other, they're battling an opponent. I think it takes time on the floor every day for them to pull for each other. I have never, Jock, and this is a pretty bold statement, I have never really, in all of my head coaching career, had kids walk in my office complaining about playing time. Now, that doesn't mean they don't complain to mamas and daddies, but they understand the team is much more important to me than any individual. If we do good as a team, you're going to get your individual accolades. And I think that that starts with a coaching staff that preaches that every day, that there's enough minutes to go around, let me figure it out. Yeah, Kim, what does Michaela bring to, you, to her talent to the floor? What does she bring to y'all? Who? M Michaela Williams. Michaela, Michaela yeah. Williams, yeah. Hey, she brings a college physical body that's already for this level. That's the first thing you'll notice is she's, she's pretty physical. Um, can play any position on the perimeter, and that may not be fair to her because I may one day have her play in point, and the next day I may have her at the off wing. I, that's tough, particularly if you're having to learn the point guard position. Uh, but she's not the only one that will be in that position this year because I think I have truly five ball handlers. Uh, I didn't say five point guards. I said ball handlers. I think two of the five are just point guards only. But I think at any point, any of those five uh, could play the point for us as, as we go along. Hi, Coach. How do you think this season's just going to be different in terms of the depth you're coming in with this time around? Uh, I think the season's going to be different in a lot of ways. We're just about to sell out the PMAC. I don't know the numbers. They were last I heard they're trying to figure out how many not to sell so they can sell walk-ups. That's a good problem to have. The brand is bigger. The NIL stuff is bigger. Uh, our schedule is a little harder. Our depth is much more. Our talent is much more. So everything's really going to be different. And all of that is a good thing. And we'll just have to stay away from injuries and uh, see what happens. Hey there, uh, Brett Martel with AP. Just, you know, I wonder if you can comment maybe both from a personal perspective and professional on the extent to which you can recognize the buzz that this particular team generates, not just in women's college basketball, but maybe the whole national sports landscape, how it compares to your previous, previous experience, um, and kind of to what extent you think your, your past uh, dealing with big, big names and big expectations kinda, is kind of helping you to get in front of that. I've always been blessed to coach some of the greatest women's basketball players the college game has ever had. 
I, I, I wouldn't even venture to start naming the great players I've coached because I would leave somebody out. So the great players have always um, allowed me to continue to do what I do. What is different, it's what I said earlier than Baylor or when I was at Louisiana Tech, is LSU is just a bigger deal. It's a bigger brand. And um, the NIL, it's no secret, that's being discussed you know, with Congress now. Um, in a lot of ways, the rich get richer. And I don't know what's going to happen there, but social media, I stay off of it. Um, they show me what I need to see and what I need to address with the team or an individual player. Um, I, I just, I know it's the world we live in. It's the world y'all live in. Y'all write your stories based on what you read on social media sometimes. And my suggestion is y'all better do your homework because a lot of that's not true. Um, but I don't ever see any of that uh, unless it's brought to my attention. I want them to do whatever they can to sell their brand. I want LSU to do everything within NCAA regulations for us to put our brand out there for every student athlete. And um, it's, it's off the charts right now at LSU. And I mean this in all sports, not just women's basketball. Uh, Angel's definitely off the charts. What, um, what, what do you see in her? You know, last year we talked about her, you know, her, her drive to be better when she's so high in the game and the recognition and all. What do you see in her as far as that drive to continue? Angel actually was in the gym with Coach Bob as I was walking over here because she gets motivated by things that um, most athletes do. She gets motivated. I think last week they put a projection out that she'd be the eighth pick in the draft, right? Well, that was an insult to her. So what is it that I have to work on? Well, this is what you got to go work on. And so whether she gets picked higher than that or not, it still motivates her to get in the gym. She gets motivated by somebody in practice going head to head with her and blocking her shot or talking trash back at her. Um, she's a competitor. I think she wants to be a good leader. I think last year she was thrown into a leadership role and um, she probably was learning as she went along. And I think now, because of that experience, maybe she'll be a better leader, both in the locker room and on the floor. Um, she's, she's a special um, a special talent. She just did something for McKinley, didn't she, yesterday? McKinley? Angel Foundation. Yeah, and her school back home. Um, a lot of athletes talk about their foundations. A lot of athletes get NIL deals, but really you're seeing her share it. That's who Angel Reese is. Hey, Coach, up here in the back. Can you just talk a little bit about the Dream Team practice squad and what they mean to the team and how they've been helping you guys this offseason? Our Dream Team, for those of you who don't know it, you should do a story on these guys. Uh, I can't tell you how many we have now, but uh, there's students at LSU that have to go through the NCAA Clearinghouse to be eligible to come out there and compete every day. Uh, certainly we have to have large numbers because there are certain days – because of their class schedule, they can't be out there. But those guys are so valuable because they do what we need them to do to prepare for our opponent. But they're also, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. And um, our girls like that, our players like that. They don't take away from the development of anybody on the team. They just are competing defensively most of the time and uh, they'll be out here today I think um, it it makes me proud because this is LSU's team this is not Kim Mulkey's team this team belongs to everybody that loves LSU and those guys feel a part of it they were at the final four they were the first ones when I walked out of the tunnel area to go to the court there they are, screaming their heads off. They're hugging these kids. They're invested in it. Um, 
I wanted to give all of them national championship rings, but there's a limit to what we can do there. I was going to pay for it out of my pocket, but, you know, NCAA rules and how much you can do and uh, because they do spend a lot of time with us. And uh, they don't have to do that. They really don't get any scholarship money. I uh, think we can give them shoes now, but it matters. And, and what's so fun is to watch them say things the next day in practice that I said to the entire team the day before. What's fun is when that national championship game was over and I'm walking to leave the court, they're screaming, what they going to say now, coach? It meant something to them. See, they're invested in it. And I want all the students. We have an unbelievable student section. We're getting to the point now where do we need to increase the number of seats in the student section because it's, it's crowded down there now. And this is their team. Without them being able to participate, I want them to feel like that's my team out there. Coach, that's time for two more questions. Yeah, right here, Kim. Uh, 60% of your made threes last year came from Jasmine and Alexis. 61%. 61. 60 61. Right there. 41% of my scoring is gone, too. Right. Who replaces, I mean, who steps into the, the role of the outside shooters, three point shooters? Who, who kind of steps in there? Morrow, Van Lith, Michaela Williams, Janae, the list goes on. We have, we have guys that can score the ball. Yeah. Really, those two did most of the the three-point shooting. Uh, the luxury with this team is we've got, we've got a lot that can do that. Last question here, Corey. Hey, Kim. Is there anything that you can project as a coach with how your returners uh, come back and go through team meetings, workouts, conditioning, everything? Is there anything to project with just kind of their first mentality when they report back? <sighs> Well, I can give you the, this as an example. Your concern is, what all my concerns will be, is Angel Reese hungry? She's making money like crazy. Is she going to be hungry for another ring? And so you get a feel for that in your first individual meeting. And so when I sat down with Angel, talked about her summer, and... Um, then we talked about her being here. And I won't ever forget it. She said, Coach, I'm tired. I'm so glad to be back. I'm ready to play basketball. So I was looking to hear that and not have to pull it out of her. She, want, she understands. Angel doesn't have all of that, guys, when she got here. She doesn't have all of that if she doesn't have success on the court. And she understands that... She just had the most unbelievable year of, of her college career, and it was fun. And you're not entitled to that again unless you work. And she's working. She's done her obligations. She understands as soon as I reported here, it's LSU time. And I know Flage and all those returning players uh, feel the same way. It's, it was so much fun. And you're not going to get back there because you're supposed to, or on paper you're supposed to. you got to work. We're going to show a video. In fact, you all can go see the video. We're going to show it to the fans. That's what I'm going to be showing them in the locker room right before we run out that we had put together. And it pretty much tells you this is part of what we do as coaches is you got to motivate young people. And what motivates those new ones will be a lot easier than what motivates those returning players. We're good? All right.